is the driver's side, left side, front wheel. Looks like a front lower ball joint still seems sealed. Rear side lower ball joint looks like it might be torn. Bushings. Look like they're okay. Rear brake, front brake pads are very thick. Rotors don't have a lip. I don't see any type of leaking around here. Suspension bellows ripped. Oil here on the inner tie rod left side. Let's go to the passenger side, right side. Lower rearward ball joint is torn. Prior requires replacing. Forward ball joint still looks sealed. Brake pads are also thick. Rotor does not have a lip. It's not as pure as there is any brake fluid leaks. Brake lines. Uh, it does look like they're very severely worn. Probably could use replacing. Let me see the brake line on the driver's side. Tie rod ball joint, it doesn't appear to have any tears. Bushings for forward Control arm doesn't appear to have any tears. <clears throat> Can't really get a good view of the rear bushing, but probably okay. Bellows with struts are torn. This is the rear of the engine. Here's the bell housing. You can see we have uh, dark oil, engine oil leaking right along the bell housing. Significant amount of drips. All along this silver braided line, there's oil. All along this sheathing for these lines right here. I think this is for the suspension unit. I just got this car, so I'm not too familiar with the suspension setup yet. You can see there's oil all around here along this manifold accumulator dampening valve type thing, I'm not sure. The connector is soaked in oil. This hose, again the silver hose, I'm not sure where exactly it leads to. Transmission cooler line here, soaked in oil. The exhaust mounting bracket that's supposed to go across here and here and then bolt up into here is missing. The sheathing for the O2 sensors, secondary O2 sensors, both left and right side have tears on the outer insulation. Doesn't seem like there's too much oil here. This connector is supposed to click onto here, and the wire is supposed to go through here. I don't know why they have a zip tie. Again, this is supposed to click up onto here. 
owner did mention that there was getting an error code off of this O2 sensor. Probably need to replace this O2 sensor. I don't believe this is an oil leak coming out of the transmission oil cooler line fitting out of the banjo bolt, but rather probably just engine oil sweeping across it. For this transmission oil cooler line, you can see that it, uh, mounting clip it is not secured on there. This isolator type bushing type thing right here severely slanted to the right and this one severely slanted towards the rear seems like it's not aligned properly looks like the right side uh, valve cover is leaking No leak out of the left side transmission uh, cooler line banjo bolt. This bottom left transmission bell housing mounting bolt isn't even tightened down all the way. And if you follow this oil cooler line, we can see that this mounting clip here isn't even mounted and secured on there either. The left side valve cover is also leaking. This is the left side steering rack. You see we have some oil right here on the left side inner tie rod. And we've got some oil leaking right around these fittings. So I'm concerned that it might be looking at the pressurized lines for the power steering. This is the front side of the power steering. You can just see how covered in oil it is. Again, I can't really specify if it's engine oil or hydraulic fluid. All along this sheath line, it's soaked in oil too. All over the bottom of the engine oil pan, just completely soaked in oil also. Right side also. Could be a gasket that needs to be replaced on the lower engine oil pan. And if you look on this side right here, that's the uh, pressure unit for the hydraulic system, hydraulic suspension on this car. And again, just dripping in oil all over here. And that's the belt pulley. You can see there's even oil soaking onto the belt itself for the accessory pulleys. I'm looking at the back of the alternator. Can't really see anything, but again, looking at the upper valve covers, you can clearly see that there is engine oil leaking up there. I believe that's the oil level sensor right there on the left. And dipstick tube to the right. Motor mount. Uh, it feels like all the bumps are there, so I'd say this motor mount is actually possibly recently replaced. That's to the right side, the left side motor mount. One, two, three, I can feel all the ridges. So again, I'd say this motor mount is still in good condition and I can, the engine is not making contact with the steering rack right here. That's usually an indicative sign if the motor mounts were shot. And looking towards the front of the accessory pulleys, the pressure, uh, pressurizer, I'm not sure what you call it, for the hydraulic unit is just soaked all over in oil there. All of these lines over here behind the left side headlight appear to be dry though. 
I don't see any oil accumulation in this area. Closest is when we get to the uh, lines over there next to the compressor. And then on the right side behind the right headlight, again, everything f looks fairly dry. You can see that clip right there doesn't have anything going through it. I'm not sure exactly what's supposed to be there. You can see the engine oil has been soaking along this rail right here. What the source is, I'm not entirely sure yet. And the back side of the accessory drive belt is in not so great condition. These tires are in not so great condition. Looks like they're dry rotting or something. They have some tread on them, but with the amount of cracking on here, I don't give these much life left. Same for the driver's side. You can see all that. Right there. And you can just see how soaked in oil these undercarriage covers are. That's the middle one directly before the engine oil pan. Here's the front, just below the accessory drives train. And the rear back here for the transmission, absolutely disgusting. It's for the ZO2 sensor, and why it's not clipped on there is just too short. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a different part number and cable length for left and right side, so. It's probably just needs the longer O2 sensor cable. As for the transmission, I'm fairly close to it, so I can't get a good angle, but it seems fairly dry. Any type of slight coating on it might just be from engine oil dripping on back. Uh, it looks like there is some slight uh, oil buildup right here. And over there, there's a, a circlip for European models that have the a parking lockout. You can see there it is. Those areas with the two lines, it'll leak out of there sometimes. Very, very minor, however, almost insignificant, I would say. Transmission shift rod bushing the green part right there seems to be in good condition. Now, uh, this exhaust clamp here for uh, the resonators. On the right side, that bolt right there is bent, so looks like I'm probably going to have to cut that off if I want to remove the exhaust and replace it with a new clamp. This whole assembly here got torn off, almost like they ran over something and tore off this part. Definitely looks like it. This is towards the front half of the car, this is towards the rear half. Looks like it just ripped it out towards the back. I don't see any oil leaking out of the transmission electrical connector, at least. Right side passenger front wheel has a knocking noise when I move it back and forth. Can't really do it right now with one hand, but whenever I shake the wheel in and out, I can hear clunking, light clunking, however. Driver's side left front wheel has even more uh, clunking going in and out. So, just confirmed that the bolt to this bell housing, the female threads are. Um, removed. It is no longer threading. So that's stripped out now. So 
yeah, what kind of other amateur work was done on this car?